Well, hello friends, it's Sandy, artist and paper crafter here on YouTube, and today I'm calling this one Indecisive Frog. Although it's not the frog that's indecisive, it's a little more of me and my coloring that were indecisive. And even though I thought about starting this one over once I figured out what colors I wanted to use, that maybe this would be more educational to just let you see that sometimes I change colors along the way. And with Copic markers, since they're transparent, that's one of the benefits of the property of their transparency is that you can change the color as you go. This YG01, at first I thought was going to be more color, I thought there's going to be more color on the page, and there wasn't. But then I thought, well, wait a minute, what if I put a lighter color, and I should have done a YG000 in the middle, because YG01 and 00 are really not far apart from each other, so I ended up with what looked like yellow frog. So I got out, you know, a, a different marker and tried to change the color again. So the YG21, just to see if that was intense enough, and it wasn't quite. One of the problems that you have is that there's no mathematical science to say if you go this many digits darker, that it's going to automatically be that much darker. It just doesn't happen because each one seems to progress at a different rate. Don't know why that is. Probably some science reason that I just am not understanding. But I looked on my Copic hex chart, which you can get from my website. If you don't have one yet, you might want to check that out if you're a new colorist, because it's really helpful. But I looked on the hex chart for greens that were more on the yellow green side than the blue green side, because I wanted this frog to feel very yellow green. So YG13 worked. And then I blended it in with my YG01. And I was looking at that and thinking, he's still kind of pale. I want more contrast. I love contrast. Contrast to me is what makes an image catch your eye. So even though we've got the contrast of the black stamped image, we still don't have contrast in the color. It feels very kind of flat. There's a very slight shade around the outside edge, but it's pretty flat. And then I started thinking, well, what if I add a little bit of texture in there. Maybe the texture and then bringing it in toward the center of the frog's face was going to work. So I started doing that by doing large dots to the outside as it got to the center, getting smaller dots. This can end up looking like he's got a disease. So if you use this, you need to use it selectively and in kind of the right ways so that it doesn't look like you've got chicken pox on your little froggy. So I'm, I'm kind of trying to figure out, as I'm doing this, what direction am I going to go with this? But I kept adding a little bit of shading to the bottom, even though it was his face that I was worried about, the, the body was not going to be an issue. So then I thought, well, I need to bring that in more so that it looks more uniform. The YG23 was too dark, so I went to the 1.3 to make it a little bit lighter. And then I took my YG01 and went just over the whole thing to soften those dots because they were just a little too too dotty looking for me. And then I went in with a YG07 thinking, okay, YG07 should be dark. And then it was like this blue-green color. I don't know why a YG color is blue-green, but it is. <laughs> so I should have looked at the chart for that one and I didn't. I just grabbed it out of my bag. So there was a boo-boo. So I covered that up with YG67, just putting enough of a definitely more yellow green color over top of it to try to nullify a little bit of that blue greenness and add a little bit of depth as well. So the YG67 started making me a little happier and I just started carrying that around the image a little bit, deepening some of my shadows just so I would have a little extra contrast because I wanted him to, to really pop. I decided to add a little color to his eyeballs because eyeballs look a little cuter if they have kind of a C shape at the bottom of it. And I used a, a blue and a blue green color to do those. And then I wanted him to sit on something. So I took some of the same greens that I had used and I wasn't sure where I was going. I just kind of started drawing a little shape. I was picturing a leaf that's floating on the water so that it would kind of go up and over the surface of the water. You can probably see I have a light pencil line in there that I tried to keep my sentiment and the bottom of my frog and the paper lined up. But this was going to kind of float up and above a little bit, so I had a little freedom to sort of make it a little on the swoopy side so that he could look like he's really sitting on this in the water. 
and adding my little, just a little bit, little tiny bit of shading with that darker green to the leaf. I did a real simple water. I mean, I just wanted to have a flood of color and you can get a good flood of color if you have a good juicy marker. If your marker is not juicy, you may end up with a little problem going on because you'll have streaks. So there is my little guy and I did add a little bit more to the leaf so that there was like looked like there was a little bit of a leaf behind him as well as in front of him and on the card I just I trimmed it down so I had a little slice of blue on the left hand side and popped the panel so that I could keep it really simple and I'm sorry card usually shouldn't be fancy I think and his little expression totally says I'm sorry all right, guys, I hope you have enjoyed this video and seen my mistakes and cheered them on because I know lots of you like to see that everybody makes mistakes. We all do. It's just a matter of how you recover from them. So go out and color something. Make sure you hit the subscribe button if you haven't yet. There's a couple other videos here to watch, and I will see you guys next time or over on the blog. Take care. Bye-bye.